Hello uh, and welcome to this video. Uh, my name is Ricardo and today uh, we're going to talk about the OpenShift serves that logic, which is uh, the new feature that we have on the, the upcoming feature that we have on OpenShift serverless um, for Red Hat. So for this quick demo, I will introduce you for, uh, for the project with uh, what we have, the features the, of the upcoming um, component that we have and why uh, you should care about uh, workflows in general. So the first thing that you have to do is to download uh, Visual Studio Code and this extension, the Code to Serverless Workflow Editor that will enable you to create your workflows and deploy them as an application on a Kubernetes cluster or OpenShift, of course. Um, the first thing, uh, after downloading uh, Visual, Studio, Visual Studio Code and the editor, uh, would be also to have to download and install in your machine Java, Maven, and also the KN uh, CLI and Quark CLI command line interfaces. So uh, in this machine, I already have uh, Quarkus installed. Uh, also, I have KN command line installed, kubectl. Um, and Maven as well. So I will let all the um, uh, resources and links and how to install this to on the description of uh, the description of this video. Uh, okay. So the first thing uh, after setting up your environment and have the editor set up, you should create uh, your first project, your first workflow. So you can in order to um, create uh, your workflow, deploy it uh, in, in the in, on the cloud. So the first thing, uh, using the KN workflow common, I can create uh, my my project, uh, which I call my first OpenShift serverless logic. So this project uh, will be created for me. Oh, all right, have it. So let me first remove it. All right, so let's create again. So yeah, like I was saying, you create your first uh, project by using KN workflow create in a meaningful name for your project. After that, uh, the only thing that you have to do is to use uh, the Studio Code and open uh, this project. So uh, my project here, I created under documents, my first uh, OpenShift serverless logic. And if you're familiar with Quarkus, uh, you see that it's just, just a regular plain Quarkus project, but there is no Java code nor anything like that. The only thing that you have to care, it is uh, the workflow file that we created under uh, source, main, and resources folder. So um, the Bootstrap CLI would just create a uh, blank uh, workflow that can work in here, like, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, I have a more interesting one that we can use as an example, so you can start playing around with it. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste in here, and I will go uh, walk you through uh, this workflow. So uh, first, first of all, this workflow language, it is an open source uh, specification uh, and under the CNS, CNCF umbrella. It calls CNCF serverless workflow specification. So it's meant to be used by uh, serverless infrastructures to define uh, workflow constructs. And uh, with that, you can uh, actually create your functions, define functions, define events, uh, orchestrate services, orchestrate functions, everything. Uh, under the Knative or OpenShift serverless platform. So everything that you have deployed on your cluster, uh, you can, uh, in sense, orchestrate and play around with it using this construct, using, using these workflows. So uh, since you have the editor uh, installed in your VS Code that, uh, IDE, you can easily you know, play around with it. So um, as you see, once I copy and paste, uh, once I pasted my workflow here, uh, the workflow will uh, generate this nice uh, view here that you can follow around. 
and there is a few constructs in here. I will let I will I will let the the commutation in the, in the description of the video so you can uh, take a look into the docs and see how that looks like. But it is pretty easy to understand. So uh, let's take a look in the states. So we have the first one that we call a switch state. That is basically to uh, you know uh, you you have to choose your path either uh, if it is uh, language. I selected was English or Spanish. Uh, then, uh, depending on my um, on the conditional, on the result of this conditional, I go through a different uh, uh, node here. So uh, I can go to the great in English state if it is English language, or I can go into the great in Spanish uh, state if it is Spanish uh, state. Uh, at the end, uh, I will concatenate this. You know the 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 hello world and view uh, finish up and wrap up my workflow. So let, let me just change this to a Boolean value. All right. So uh, this language here, it is JQ. So it is a, a, a very popular language expression language that you can use to manipulate uh, the JSON data uh, that you have you know, within your workflow. So basically, uh, serverless logic will work with JSON in, in, in its sense. So you have to push a, a JSON uh, content to the workflow using you know, HTTP or uh, cloud event uh, on, on the OpenShift service platform uh, in a form of JSON files, in the JSON data. So uh, once the, your JSON data is uh, running within the workflow, you can play around with it and you know, select anything, uh, do a few transformations in your, uh, in your data uh, using JQ, it is pretty powerful language. So uh, let's 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 try to to take a look into it, right, and see how that works. So uh, in my terminal, I have here uh, my project, my so I'm in the root of my project, I, and I'm, I'm gonna use the uh, Quark CLI to bootstrap the project and see how that will look like uh, in my mach on my machine. So let's let's try to build that first. Can take a few seconds to wrap up since it is the first time that I'm doing this. Okay, let's wait a little bit. Why will we bootstrap the project? Yeah, there's a few tools that Quarkus will fire up when you are what we call dev mode. When you when you when you type Quarkus dev uh, in the CLI, there is this a few um, uh, features and services that Quarkus will uh, uh, create in order to have a more meaningful experience for your development uh, cycle while in local. So yeah, let's try to access the application now. It is it, it should be. Uh, uh, available in the default normally usually the default port that we, that we have right like um, that is localhost uh, 88 so uh, when every every open chip serverless logic project we have a swagger uh, interface uh, available so uh, once we create uh, the project you can see that the, 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 the my endpoints is named after my workflow, like JSON grid here. And you can see in here uh, the ID of my workflow is JSON grid. So uh, I have this interface that I keep playing around. And uh, we can try it out, uh, this application. So uh, what I have it is like the input of my workflow. It is expecting the language, as you can see and the name, right? So let's put my name here. And I can easily just execute in here and I will uh, create a new instance of the workflow and uh, we should have uh, a reply with my information and the greeting here. So as you can see, something is really uh, weird, right? We have the greeting mass uh, attribute here, but no name, you know, not anything like that. So what can be happen? Let's take a look. Uh, what we have is that once we finish 
the workflow. Uh, when we start the workflow, the, the workflow will just you know, go here, uh, choose the path, since I chose English, go with English, and then greet person. Uh, and we'll execute this function here, uh, what we call grid function. And this grid function is just a uh, sees out type of operation, meaning that I'm just, you know, um, printing in the console uh, the, 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 the information that I have here, the expression that I have here, that is the greeting and the name attribute. And as you can see here in the console, we have uh, the message, uh, you know, Printed in the in the console, so it is not like the experience that I have that I want to to have, right? So let's try to play around a little bit with this and see what we can accomplish. So one of the things that we have in the workflow it is the ability uh, to do some sort of manipulation uh, in the data that I have. So let's go to this grid person uh, state. There is an operation state. And I will add here the state data filter uh, attribute. As you can see, the editor provide me an IntelliSense that I can play around with it. And uh, once I, has, I receive the information, my workflow goes here into this state. Um, I can perform uh, uh, something here that I call an output for this state. So this state will output uh, something here, you know, we will output uh, as the expression that I'm going to add here, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll tell the, the, the runtime to do. So in this expression, what I want to do is um, concatenate my greeting and my name. So I have it right here. It is basically the same operation, that, the same expression that I have here, but I will add in here. All right, so I save this file and I try to call it again uh, using the Swagger UI. So you see, I don't need to be there again. I don't need to do anything. I just do the, uh, the, the change that I need to do in my editor and I click and on execute. So Quarkus will take every file that I've changed in my project and will um, do the the change for me uh and it will be uh, with only the the things that i changed in my in my project so as you can see the result of the workflow data it is now uh the right greeting so that's how we do so let's say uh i know i want spanish instead of english so that how that looks like it will look like the the message now it is um, saludos this the JSON workflow. So it is like a different message uh, based on the language that I have in here. So let's try to do something even better. Uh, what about adding a new condition in here? So instead of only English and Spanish, I'm going to do Portuguese as well. So, oh, sorry, my mouse is a little bit crazy. Let's go and use uh, Portuguese instead. So let me copy and paste would be uh, way easier. All right. Oh, yeah, I need to change in here and type Portuguese. way better instead of just clicking there. Okay, so uh, I have English, Spanish, and Portuguese now as options. And then uh, instead of transitioning to with greeting Spanish, I will transition to greeting in Portuguese. All right, so as I have greeting Portuguese, I have to have a state that transitions to greeting Portuguese. So I have English, in Spanish, and I will also have greeting in Portuguese. Look at me, I know how to type this same sentence in Portuguese as well. 
it is like this. Hola, the JSON workflow. I save my file and I will do the same thing and again. I will execute. Quarkus will just be with the new uh, uh, file that I've just changed it. And here's my, my reply with Spanish because I didn't change my language. Let's try now. Yeah, it works. So if I change to something that doesn't exist, uh, what happens in this case is that I go for the default uh, condition, as you can see here in green, uh, from chosen language, I go to grade in English because it is my default transition. So, or if I wanted to go further and, you know, make it, uh, I don't know, maybe a little more, you know, easier for my users, instead of typing the entire name, I just use the language code. So same thing, I change, I save. Uh, of course, I need to change the here as well. My request, I do the request again. And reply is over here. It's pretty nice. All right, so um, we have everything uh, and we've finished our work uh, in the in the, in the our local machine. And uh, so we're gonna, I'm gonna just stop the execution here for Quarkus Dev. I wrap up, finish my my work, and now I wish to deploy this application on Kubernetes. So. I or on OpenShift or any kind of Kubernetes flavor really, but the, for the OpenShift serverless logic, we're going to use in my local in my local environment. I'm gonna use uh, Minikube just to evaluate if uh, I am doing everything correctly and it it works uh, on Knative. So uh, I'm gonna access my uh, internal hash screen here, and I'm gonna use Cogito uh, workflow instead of create now. Um, I'm gonna use build instead. So, oh, sorry, let's, okay. So what I'm gonna do here, uh, the first thing is that I'm gonna build this image uh, using, you know, this name as my uh, as my image name. Dev.local means that uh, I'm pushing the image to my local uh, registry so I can, you know, do, I don't need to use any kind of uh, external resource to push my image. It, it, that will just work. So let's uh, build that. Um, so the, the CLI will just take uh, all the, the, the project information that I have here, uh, the information about the image, the information about the project, and we'll create uh, a an image and push that to my internal registry of my mini cube. So okay, we're waiting for a couple minutes. Okay, took 35 seconds only, but I forgot to add one thing actually. There is a uh, this file here, the application properties that you can do a lot of things with that and configure your application the way you want and do more advanced use cases. In this case, I'm going to do it is just to add the option to add that nice interface of Swagger also in production. That means that that interface is uh, by default. It is only added in Quarkus dev mode. But in this case, I'm going to add here uh, just to have you know, the option to play around with the interface also uh, in the cluster. So let me build that again. Hopefully we now have all the layers and we'll take uh, less than 35 or not. All right. Let's wait a little bit more. Oh yeah, this is a nice feature. You can just pan here and then the workflow will just you know rearrange together with your new visualization depending on the resolution of your monitor or anything like that. All right, uh, we have the image and we can uh, take a look into it. Yeah, it is here. Just created. All right, 
the next thing now that we have to do is um, to see if we have a namespace, a proper namespace to deploy uh, our application. So I'm going to create one, create any ass, I'm going to call it demo. All right. So um, I'm going to set the namespace um, to demo. So it would be easier for me to deploy things and, and, and get my pods and everything. I don't have pods. Oh, as you can see, uh, let's use KN to, to try to see if we have any service deployed. No, we don't have any service. So let's use KN to deploy our workflow. So the the command is pretty simple, like um, KN workflow deploy. It will take your uh, image, your, your project that you just built and push it and deploy it directly into the uh, KN into my my namespace so let's try to take a look to see if we have yeah we have it is provisioning let's see oh it is already here so if i click in here in this uh in this address in this endpoint i should be redirected uh to my uh swagger interface but now in the cluster so what i'm going to do now is try to access the application right now in the in the cluster and uh if you go to terminal and you try to see if you have any pods i'm gonna see there you know it is running uh, uh as the knative K -native service deployment so if i do the same thing like what uh what we are trying to do now uh let's try to do another you know request but now using uh language portuguese let's try name here uh, my name is Ricardo, and I'm going to execute it. Yep, it's working, but now working uh, on Kubernetes. So that's all for this video today. Uh, I, I wanted to show really um, how you can get you started with your first workflow, how you can deploy it on Knative. And I will leave uh, in the, on the description everything that you, that you need to set up your environment and to understand uh, you know, this, the, this workflow DSO, but it's really, really simple, really, uh, using intelligence of the editor and the, the visualization tooling that we have here, everything would be, um, uh, much, much easier for you to understand and to create your own workflows. Uh, I intend to, to record more videos, more advanced videos and, 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 and teach you how, uh, you can actually call an external service or an, ex uh, or an event or anything or, you know, using for a use case, more complex uh, use cases as well. Okay, right. uh, I hope you, you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. See you. Bye-bye.